Welcome. In last session, we are discussing about uh, projection methods for iterative solution of Ax is equal to b, and we started our discussion considering the steepest descent algorithm. However, what we observed that steepest descent algorithm is uh, only applicable for symmetric positive definite matrices. And we ended the discussion with a note that if the matrix is not symmetric, neither positive definite for a, or any for any general matrix, what can be an equivalent algorithm. So, before coming into projection methods or steepest descent algorithm or gradient search algorithm, which we discussed in last few classes, we discussed about another iter class of iterative solvers, which are Jacobi and Gossel or s solvers, which are called uh, direct iterative solvers. Uh, what we have seen that they are also limited for certain class of matrices, which are diagonally dominant or irreducibly diagonally dominant matrices. So, till now we are yet to find out a method which is applicable for any non any type of non singular matrix. However, when we have looked into direct solvers, we have found number of methods which are applicable for any general non singular matrices like Gauss elimination, LU decomposition. Uh, uh, not uh, finding solution of normal equation, few methods like this, and uh, Gauss Jordan method is also one of that. Kramer's rule can also find out solution for any non singular matrix. How, but we also found one method called tridiagonal matrix algorithm, which is a very fast method. The number of computational steps are extremely small, which is only applicable for matrices which are tridiagonal matrices. So, uh, but for general direct solvers, we have seen that they are robust in a sense, they can take care of any type of matrices. However, the general direct solvers are limited in a sense that they need lot of computational steps. So, we looked into iterative solvers and as we just said before, iterative solvers, the number of solvers we looked before are restricted either for uh, diagonally dominant matrices, which are Jacobi, Gossel or SOR matrices or Po, uh, symmetric positive definite matrix, which is uh, uh, the method is steepest descent algorithm. So, now our question is to find out method for any general solver. And we also will like to get faster solvers, that means, in number of less number of iterations with doing uh, less number of computational steps, we should be able to reach the solution. So, we will look for a broader class of solvers. This class of solver, which we are looking at this stage, will borrow their idea from steepest descent algorithm and will try to generalize it more for general type of matrices, which are any non-singular non matrix. So, we start our discussion on general projection methods, which are projection based iterative solvers. So, we quickly see what we have done in steepest descent method. Suppose, A is a symmetric and positive definite matrix and B is a vector, uh, we are solving A x is equal to B and j x is a quadratic functional, j x is equal to half x transpose a x minus x transpose b, then x star is equal to b implies that j x star is less than j x for all x is equal to x is not equal to x star for all x. So, sol finding solution of x is equal to b is replaced by finding minima of the functional j x and in a sense we uh, can get find this minima iteratively. So, we do, that is why we do not call it direct iterative solvers, because we are not iterating for solution of x star is equal to b, rather we are solving iterating for finding minima of j x. So, what we do? We get a j isocontour that is the value of j is constant along this particular uh, surface and then we uh, can see that the value of j reduces fastest uh, in the direction of minus grad j from here. So, uh, one thing quickly we can say is that j, this, if I draw a tangent here, this is j constant line. If I draw a tangent here, this is j constant line. So, if I draw a line perpendicular to ta tangent or minus grad j, this is the direction where j is changing in a fastest way. In this line, j is j is constant. So, j is not changing at all along the tangent, along the normal or along minus grad j, j is changing fastest. So, we move along minus grad j, that is j is we move our x vector along minus grad j. So, j reduces in the fastest direction and 
reach somewhere where it becomes tangent to another isocontour and then change the direction and that way we can keep on changing the search direction and we will finally reach j minima and at this location the value of x is the solution of a x star is equal to b that was the idea of steepest descent method. We have discussed it in detail in last few classes. And the question remains that steepest descent is said to be designed for symmetric positive definite matrix. So, what to do for non symmetric positive definite matrix? So, we um, go to the next slide that what do we actually do in a steepest descent method? We choose with an arbitrary x 0 and then find out a direction vector v which is equal to minus grad j. And this is a we find the value of j here, find the value of j here. So, we write this as j, j is equal to constant line, this is j is equal to constant line or j isocontour, find minus grad j which is v and move x along that direction by a certain uh, value alpha v. We move a certain distance alpha along the alpha into v in this direction and then we will again change the direction. With an arbitrary x is equal to x 0 find a j modify x in a direction v which is perpendicular to j. So, start with an arbitrary value modify x in a particular direction and while modifying x in the in the direction we have chosen the direction which is perpendicular to j. v is same as r is equal to, so v is same as r, r is equal to b minus a x 0 what we call to be residual, residual. So, the idea is update x from x 0 start with an arbitrary value x 0 update x from there along a particular direction. Also in that case allow the residual r which is b minus a x 0 to remain orthogonal to a functional space. So, x is updated along certain direction here this direction is r only and also when updating x allow this value r to remain orthogonal to certain functional space. Here the space is j constant line it can be a different space in different application also. So, these two are the basic steps in the philosophy of steepest descent project projection method that update x in along particular direction in during one particular iteration and then allow the residual to remain orthogonal to a functional space. What will happen in the next step? We will allow, we will update x in this particular direction and r will remain orthogonal to the previous r, right. r will be now be orthogonal to the new j contour isocontour which is perpendicular to the previous r direction. So, we will get r k plus 1 which is orthogonal to r k and x k plus 1 is equal to x k plus alpha into r k. So, update x along one particular direction and the residual is orthogonal to uh, some uh, functional space this alpha r k or uh, this is orthogonal to j k also. So, with this idea we will try to generalize an iterative method that x is updated along a particular direction and the residual is orthogonal to another to one particular one particular functional. They may be same here they are probably they are same they may not be same and this will give us a different class of method and this is called a general projection method. The uh, uh, theory of general projection method is that let A be a real n into n matrix and k and l be two m dimensional subspaces of R n. So, they may not be a complete uh, 1D space may not be a complete uh, vector space of R n, they are subspaces of R n and they are m dimensional, let us assume they are m dimensional subspaces of R n. A uh, projection technique onto the subspace k and orthogonal to L is a process that finds 
an approximate solution x prime of x is equal to b by imposing the condition that x prime belongs to k. The new solution the approximate solution the solution we obtain after an iteration belongs to certain space because we are updating it along particular uh, direction. So, it belongs to a particular vector space that is the idea. So, x prime belongs to certain space and the new residual vector r k plus 1 which is a x prime minus b is perpendicular to a orthogonal to a functional space L. So, there are two spaces x prime belongs to one space and the residual is perpendicular to another space. So, why because finally, will when the solution will converge we will see that the residual is 0. So, then we will take dot product of residual and it will be anyway it should give us 0 at any point of time. So, we approximately we take one space one uh, subspace in which residual is orthogonal to that subspace and the new solution is updated along another particular subspace. So, there are two subspaces with which we can generalize the projection idea. Again I will go back to the previous slide. So, this comes from that that x is updated along a particular direction that means L x belong to the update of x belong to one particular subspace and the residual r is orthogonal to a particular subspace. So, there are two subspaces involved in steepest descent type of algorithm. In steepest descent we can see that that x is the update of x is along one particular direction while I am doing that the residual is remaining orthogonal because residual will be my new such direction. So, residual is orthogonal to another particular direction here which is the uh, isocontour of j or the even the previous tangent to the isocontour of j or previous residual direction. So, now this statement does not tell about any uh, iterative technique it says that one approximate solution of x prime can be found out that is not the right solution. So, we have to keep on modifying the approximate solution which will be which will take us to the best approximated solution where the uh, difference uh, between the actual sol exact solution and approximate solution is minutely smaller it will it should convert. So, for an iterative method and this condition is called a petrov galarkin condition that you uh, uh, update uh, find an approximate solution of x is equal to b imposing the condition that x prime the approximate solution x prime belong to a particular subspace k and the new residual vector is orthogonal to l. So, if we uh, again go back that we can write the for steepest descent method what we are doing I am uh, updating. So, I have started from some value x 0 here I have updated x is equal to x 0 plus alpha v right. I have updated x along this particular direction v and uh, so, this there is some issue here I think I should wipe it out. Up to when I have updated till the this particular line becomes tangent to the new functional space. And the and then the new such direction will be orthogonal to heat, or this the new such direction will be the new residual space R k plus one, which is orthogonal to this particular direction. So x is updated along one direction, and R k plus one is orthogonal to another direction. There is there is the idea here. X prime belong to a subspace k and residual vector r is equal to b minus a x is orthogonal to l. Here the subspace and uh, k and l are same in steepest descent algorithm x prime belongs to 
or the it's not exactly x prime in the steepest descent we will see the iterative application, but if we assume that we start with the gauge value x is equal to 0. So, x prime will be along uh, b my along the vector b b minus a x a x is equal to 0. So, along b x prime will be along one particular direction and the updated residual will be perpendicular to that direction only in steepest descent. But in, in a general case x prime belong to one particular uh, space k and the residual vector is perpendicular to a, a, another particular space uh, L and L and k may be same or may not be same that is a different question. If L and k are same which happened in the steepest descent method they are called orthogonal projection. If they are not same they may be uh, L may be uh, transformed transformation of k l may be completely unrelated with k. There are several methods we will discuss soon that is called an oblique projection. So, steepest descent we can say that l and k are same and both are basically r k or minus grad j whatever the way we want to present it. Now, if we redefine this method for an iterative uh, to design an iterative method we will start with an initial grace x 0 we will find an approximate solution or the new iterative, iterative value x tilde x prime which, which is x prime is equal to x 0 plus k the update belongs to certain space k such that the new residual b minus a x prime is equal to is perpendicular to l. So, this is the updated value and this update is in along the vector space l and this is the new residual and this is remember that this is during each iteration. So, in the next iteration k and l might change in one particular iteration there we can see there is one space k along which I am updating x. So, I will start with x 0 I will give some get, take some vector in the vector space k add that with x 0 and find out the updated vector x t prime. Now, the residual b minus x prime is orthogonal to one particular vector space L. K and L if they are same we will call that to be orthogonal projection, if K and L are not same we will call them to be oblique projection. So, x tilde x prime is equal to x 0 plus v y where v is a basis for k. So, what is y? y is basically combination of scalars which is multiplied with the basis vectors or we can write x prime is equal to x 0 plus delta, delta is the amount of change finally, the, the amount of change which is done to uh, x added to x 0 to get x prime. So, here we can write that delta belongs to the vector space k, this change belongs to the vector space k. the initial residual r 0 is equal to b minus a x 0. New residual r is b minus a x prime. When we have found the new residual we really do not bother about the initial residual, because our condition is that the new residual is sorry our condition is that that new residual is orthogonal to L. So, R 0 minus A lambda must be orthogonal to L and we find R is equal to uh, B minus A x t prime which is R 0 minus A lambda and this is orthogonal to L. So, now what we will try to do? We will try to find out the basis vectors for L and when we will replace this basis basis vectors for L uh, in this equation and take the dot product with the basis vectors of L with R 0 minus B lambda and get it to be 0. And by that way we should be able to get some relationship because if I look into uh, lambda this lambda is nothing but V y lambda is nothing but v y. So, we can probably the next step will be r 0 minus a v y is perpendicular to L. 
So, if I get basis vectors of L and uh, uh, take a dot product that should be 0 that will give, uh, give me some idea about y based on the how v and l are related. If uh, l and k are same it, it will be probably much straightforward to find out y otherwise also there are some certain ways. So, let us uh, go for one more uh, step here that is what we found out that the new residual is r 0 minus a lambda which is orthogonal to a space l we have not said anything about l we know that there is some space l forget the steepest descent where l is equal to r or minus rj in general projection method x is updated along a particular vector space k now this updated x is giving me a residual b minus a x updated or b minus r 0 minus a lambda r 0 was the previous residual this r 0 minus a lambda is perpendicular to some vector space l. And if we look into the projection uh, method, we had an old r 0, what was the last step r 0, oh, sorry, r 0 minus a lambda is perpendicular to l. So, if I subtract a lambda from r 0, we get the new residual r nu which is perpendicular to l. So, we can write r nu is perpendicular to l. Now, if we think w uh, is a basis of l, so there are a set of vectors which define w which is a basis of l. We can write w transpose r 0 minus a lambda is equal to 0, because r nu is or uh, so we can also write w transpose sorry write that w transpose r nu is equal to 0, because r nu is orthogonal to l and l is spanned by w vectors right this this set is called probably w which are the independent uh, linearly independent vectors uh, spanning the entire set L. So, L transpose R 0 minus A lambda is equal to 0 and W transpose A lambda is equal to W transpose R 0. If we started with a guess x 0, R 0 is already known to us. What is not known to us is lambda is delta rather because delta is a vector which is along k, we do not know exact value of delta, but delta is a vector which is along k. So, if we know k, we know that linear combinations of the basis of k has given me delta, but what is the exact linear combination that we do not know and that that is what we are trying to find out. Delta is equal to v y, this v, v is basis of the space k. So, if I if k and l are given we can we know about w and we know about v we do not know about delta uh, y. So, now we write w transpose a v y is equal to w transpose r 0 or we get y is equal to w transpose a v inverse by uh, w transpose a v inverse w transpose r 0. We can get once we have got y, we can get x tilde x prime is equal to x 0 plus tilde is equal to x 0 plus v y x 0, or we can write it down that this is, is this is equal to x 0 plus w transpose a v inverse w transpose r 0 multiplied by v. Okay. So, um, if we now try to see what we have actually done, what we have actually done is we assumed that x tilde is x prime rather is the new updated case which is an approximate solution of some equation as a x is equal to b. Now, this solution 
is obtained iteratively by updating a gas solution. The question is how should we update the gas solution? The idea we got from steepest descent algorithm that we should update the gas solution in a sense will minimize the functional j that means the x will be updated along a direction of gradient of j x will be updated up to a point till this is tangential to a new isocontour of j after that the new update direction of x will be perpendicular to the previous update direction of j and this idea we carried that x is updated along a particular line this update of x now maybe we know about the line but how on that line x will be updated what distance well, remember when we are doing steepest descent we are also trying to find out what is the distance till which we should update uh, x till till which we should move along gradient of j x 0 minus gradient of j x 0 so we should move up to a distance while updating it so that the new residual is orthogonal to certain plane. So, we have two spaces L and K the uh, uh, basis vectors W and V and we are trying to update x in a way that x is updated along K. So, x is equal to x 0 plus V y V is the basis of K and this y will come from the fact that the new residual B minus A x is perpendicular to some space w or w transpose b minus a x is equal to 0. So, it looks very abstract in, in next session we will uh, consider some, some like simplified case like we will take one particular vector uh, uh, in v and one particular vector in w we will consider them to be 1 d subspaces and we will see that lot of formulations come out when we think of that. The only thing is that probably we will take from the idea of general projection method I said like this this might look little abstract and the later formulations will be little more abstract when we will go to Krylov space type of uh, methods. But we are updating x in an iterative method in a direction that is given some along certain in, in the inner direction which is a subspace in R m. When we are updating it we are taking care that b minus a x is the new uh, after the update what the b minus x will get is orthogonal to another subspace. So, we probably will have decided about these two subspaces and we will see that this conditions hold and then we will see that my update has been fulfilled that b minus a update has completed the iteration particular iteration step is completed. I have updated x such, such that the new b minus a x is orthogonal to a given plane and we will continue this and we'll later we can show that this method actually converges. So, one very important idea is that when we will go through number of steps in that direction finally, where we will end we will update x by infinite small amount we will update x almost the k has almost become the 0 vector we will update x by a very small amount and the new update the new b minus a x is also a 0 vector if x if x plus uh, x is equal to x plus alpha v right x is equal to x plus alpha v so or a is, is equal to x plus delta if delta becomes 0 in that case my b minus a x x prime b minus a x is also a 0 vector. So, when the update has become a 0 vector b minus x will also become 0 vector and then that is when the iterations will converge we will we'll look into it in detail and we will see when, under what conditions for which type of matrices these iterations converge. In, in uh, next class we will start from here we will consider a particular subspace along which x is being updated we will consider another particular subspace to which the residual will be orthogonal and then we will try to see that that lead gives us uh, a particular iterative scheme. For example, we will get steepest descent algorithm which we discussed last few classes uh, as one uh, by one particular choice of the spaces k and l and we will also see that this iterative scheme will converge to the right result that we will look into the next class. Thank you.